Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to do the step by step setup of Oracle Rack 21C on Microsoft Windows 2019 using VMware Workstation. You heard me right, Oracle Rack 21C on Microsoft Windows 2019 on VMware Workstation. The, the softwares that are used in this particular tutorial is VMware Workstation Pro 17 Evaluation Edition, Windows 2019 Evaluation Edition, Oracle 21C Grid, Oracle 21C database. I have used 7-zip to extract the software. You, It is optional and that is why I have not listed it here. These are the only softwares that you need. These are the only softwares that you need to perform this particular exercise. Apart from this, you don't need anything else. Now, there are a lot of the steps that we, we have to do. So I'm not going to go through the document first, explaining all the steps, but I will cover the document at the end of the video. All the steps I will cover at the end of the video, but for now, I will just start with the actual exercise. What we need is we need three machines. The one is domain controller. This is your rack node one. This is your rack node two. All of these are running Windows 2019. All of them are running Windows 2019. The 192.168.1 is your public IP. Remember it, 192.168.1 is your public IP. Zero is your private IP. The domain controller is also acting as a file server. So domain controller AD is also serving as a file server. Now you can use any other storage boxes, but probably most of the people who do this lab may not have the different file server. If you have, well and good, you can use that as a file server. I'm using the domain Windows domain controller as the file server. And this will be two nodes which will be participating in the rack. Now, First, what we will do is like we will create one gold image and that that gold image we will give bridged adapter uh, for the public IP and internal network for the private IP and optionally we will uh, add a second hard disk and install 7-zip and we will use that particular machine. We will use that particular machine to actually um, we will use that particular machine to actually set up the software uh, so you know uh, clone the software so once this is all done we will make three clones of that machine and we will use that particular clones to set up the 19dc node 1 and node 2 and we will not use that gold image so let's go through this first few steps and start working on uh, things so let's go to the vmware so i'm going to remove all of this it's not there actually so let's remove all of this these are not there so i'm going to remove this and i'm going to say file new virtual machine custom and workstation 17 i will install operating system later click on next microsoft windows windows 2019 click on next give a name any name of your choice i'm giving win 19 gold so this is the gold image or a base image whatever you want to call bios click on next four cores click on next um probably 10 gb if you want to give less if you have less you can give less bridge adapter click on next uh, this is fine nvme this is fine uh, you create a new virtual disk this is fine store single virtual disk 80 gb if you want to give a 60 gb that is fine or more that is also fine disk one so this will be your disk one click on next click on finish now what what we are going to do is like we are going to click on this edit virtual machine settings go to the starter drive use iso image and locate where we have kept the windows 2019 evaluation edition click on ok and power on the machine this this one is going to install windows 2019 this is your gold image this image will be cloned into three different machines the domain controller the rack node one and rack node two so we are setting the gold image first so click on next install now choose choose data center evaluation click on next accept the license click on next install or custom whatever you want click on next and it has started installing so the installation is going to take some time i'm going to pause the video and come back once the installation is completed <laughs> the windows 2019 evaluation uh, evaluation edition installation is completed so it will ask for a password so give give a strong password and um, then log into the machine using the password that you just specified 
and the first thing that you do is install say no to this and first thing that you do is install the uncheck this install the vmware guest edition vmware guest editions is a software which allows you to do some things like copy paste or shared folder access etc etc so let's install that And we will also rename this drive as a, as a Windows drive. So we know that this is a Windows drive. We don't have to, but you know, it it's just, it makes your life easier. So let's done. And it's asked for a restart. So I'm going to hold on for that restart because um, yeah, probably we can, we can restart that particular machine. But what I'll do is like, I will, uh, that's fine. So what I'll do is uh, I will, <clears throat> uh yeah I, I i will do one small settings here uh which what okay so it's asking okay so let me actually restart so for some reason the restart uh it's not allowing me to click on the start button which is fine so what i'll do is like you know i will just power it off and um, then i'll click on this and before turning on i need to do some settings so i'm going to do some settings so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another hard drive and that particular hard drive on the domain controller will be used for the storage and on the other it will be used as a as a oracle home so i'm allocating a 80 gb hard drive new 80 gb and i'll give this as a disk 2 again this is your choice whatever you want to give so i'm going to give this as a disk 2 and i'm going to also add so the first adapter is a bridge adapter i'm going to add another adapter the network adapter and this time it will be a, a internal adapter so i'm going to choose vmnet2 internal adapter so i'm going to choose this and that's done so now we got two network adapters you can see and we got two hard drives each of 80 gb so i'm going to now I'm going to power on this particular machine and i'm, I'm trying to I'm, I'm going to see if i can copy the 7 zip or if not i will try to download it from the so let me log into this particular machine sometimes the yeah so sometimes uh, okay so for some reason that uh, vmware install tools did not uh, did it not get installed let's see um yeah i think it has got installed but it is not coming up so probably it needs another restart which we will do status is unknown which is fine okay so let's try to restart this particular machine one more time okay even after restarting that issue has not fixed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uninstall and reinstall the vmware tools so this this will fix but i'm not going to waste your time uh, because you can see here I'm getting this particular error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uninstall and reinstall So I don't want to waste your time. So I'm going to pause it and once it is reinstalled properly, then I will come back Okay, so the VMware issue has been fixed by uninstalling and reinstalling that so what we will do here is we are going to remember we we had only one disk which is the windows drive so what we are going to do now is i'm going to go to administrator tools and computer management and under the computer management disk management and under disk management you can see we got this extra 80 gb disk so i'm going to format that disk as a as a as a probably o o stands for oracle so i'm going to create it as a oracle disk click next and click on finish so we we are going to create and you can see now that we have a 80 gb disk that's one thing and uh, we i'm also going to see if i can copy the 7 zip and install otherwise i have to install that on a multiple host so let's see if i can copy sometimes it won't allow me to copy but give me give me give me yeah so that's got okay that's a good thing so we are i'm just going to install the 7 zip 7 zip is not mandatory this software is not mandatory however it will help me uh it will help me to extract the oracle software otherwise oracle software sometimes 
takes uh, uh, sometimes it it doesn't uh, it, it, if if you use inbuilt software to extract Oracle software, it will take time. Windows extractor. So I'm using the seven zip. So all we have done whatever we were supposed to do on the on the uh, on the gold image. So I'm going to shut down this particular gold image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three clones of this particular machine. So right click on this gold image. Click on manage. Click on clone. Click on next current state full clone click on next give the name this first node will be your domain controller so give the name as domain controller click on finish it's going to create a clone wait for the clone to complete then we will move to the next clone so close this then go to again same gold image clone it click on next the current state create a full clone click on next and this time you'll say win 19 node one. So this will be your rack node one. Click on finish. And then we will again do the <clears throat> manage and clone and next current state full clone next. And this time we'll give the node two. So we are creating. So this is what we have done. Install the addition bridge adapter for public internal network for private install 7zip we also added a second hard drive for oracle home and grid and made three clones of the machine so the first part is done we don't need the gold image so i'm going to remove it from the library we don't need that particular gold image so i'm going to remove the gold image from my library that's what i'm going to do so i'm going to remove it from the library and now we are going to only work on these three machines so now we need to do the first thing that we need to do because this all these machines are exactly the same copy. So we need to do actually sysprep. Sysprep generalizes the machine. So we need to do the sysprep on all of these three machines. So I'm going to launch the first machine. I'm going to launch the second machine and I'm going to launch the third machine. And sysprep is the only thing that I'm going to do together. Rest all I will do sequentially. So you don't get confused. The sysprep is the only thing that I'm going to do on all three machines at uh, at one go. So let's log into the let's log into the uh, domain control of the first machine. Let's log into the node one. And as I told you, this is the only thing that I'm going to do on all three machines at the same time. Rest all I'm going to do one at a time. So I'm going to lock open Windows Explorer. Go to that location. Let's see if it gets pasted. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay, give it a minute. If it doesn't get pasted, that's okay. Yeah, that got pasted. So sys Windows C drive, Windows System32, sysprep, System32, sysprep, sysprep, run as administrator, OOBE, generalize, reboot. Same thing here. run as administrator o b generalize reboot and same thing here so this is the only thing that i'm doing on all the three nodes at the same time rest all of whatever i do in this particular tutorial will be in sequential once the sysprep is done it's going to reboot the machine it's going to do that on the second machine is going to do it on the third machine so i'll pause the video and come back once it is done on all three nodes so it has done on all the three nodes. So let's accept if you want to change any of these values, you can change it. I'm going to leave them as it is. Accept the license. Give a password for your admin user. And for the node one also, next. Accept. Give the password. Finish. And for the node one as node two as well. So let's do that on all the three nodes now the now whatever i'm going to do next is all going to be in sequence so now we have to set up the domain controller so sysprep is done this is the networking for your domain controller so this is your public ip one is public ip zero is private ip subnet mask and the dns can be either this the same ip 
or it can be 127.0.0.1 so you can keep any of this and once all of these ips are set you are going to rename this uh, you are going to rename the computer and you are going to restart the machine so now let's go to the domain controller and finish the work on the domain controller so let's log in and what we are going to do here is click on no here and uh, we need to change some of the network i network ip so i'm going to change it and i'm going to say change adapter and I'm, I'm going to rename this so this is public this is the first pub the first one is public because this is the bridge adapter and this is not mandatory but this one will help you to you know visualize so i'm going to click on this click on properties uncheck ipv6 click on ok and click on properties uncheck ipv6 so i have disabled ipv6 on both click on properties again click on ipv4 click on properties and give the ip address the ip address will be for the public it is ending with and for the domain controller i have kept it as 109 so for this one we are going to change it to use following address and this and the uh, this is the default gateway and this is the the loop we will use the loopback ip for the domain controller so that's done and do the same thing for your this one but here except for this it will and for here 127.0.0.1 that's okay that's good and now we are going to rename the machine using this particular command powershell command we are going to rename your domain controller so let's launch powershell in the admin mode and we are going to we are going to rename the domain controller and restart that particular machine i'll pause the video so that's rebooted so i'm going to log into domain controller and verify some things so let me launch command prompt and let's verify two three things ip config and 1.109 has got this one 0 0.109 and this is private this is public looks good host name let's see if the host name got changed yes host name got changed as well so now what we need to do is we need to set up this particular machine as a domain controller for that we need to add this particular role active directory domain services and we also need to set this as a file server so for that we need to add another role called scuzzy target server so what for that what we need to do and i'm going to do once one thing actually i'm going to enable remote setting for this so that i can show it to you in a big screen so i'll open remote desktop settings and i'm going to change it to yes confirm and then i'm going to open win win 19 dc and oracle user is still not created we will create it as a domain so i'm going to i can log in as an administrator so let me log in as a administrator and password of the administrator and say yes and what we need to do is we need to we need to add a role so server manager tools okay so not tools we can use tools also but here i'll use add roles and features and uh, what we are going to do is i'm going to add two roles one is in on this particular server one is the scuzzy target so i'm going to use the scuzzy target that's one role and i'm going to use the another role active directory so these active directory domain services so the adds and scuzzy target server these are the two roles that i'm going to install i'm not going to install any other role and click on install now once the installation is done what will happen is like once the installation is done what will happen is like here you will see a triangular notification here you will see a triangular notification so after the installation of a domain control uh, domain services you have to promote this particular server as a domain controller so you have to promote this particular server as a domain controller that's a that's a big step and once this particular server is promoted and you can see a big triangle appear so you can close this this is the notification and let's click on that particular notification it says promote this server to a domain controller so accept that and then what what we are going to do now is we are going to say add a new forest 
and give the name of your domain so db.com click on next and the, I'm, you can give whatever you want this is just a name so this is the database database we are database guys and give the password of your dsrm give some complex password it will not accept a simple password so give some complex password click on next and dns delegation uncheck keep unchecked here it will automatically populate the netbios name automatically it will populate the netbios name as a db let's wait for it to populate because we chose db.com it will choose db as a netbios name so give it a minute that's got populated click on next it's going to pre-populate the paths for us the paths where database log and system it all stores all of that information so it's going to pre-populate and accept those so database log etc sys etc so click on next and it gives us all these options click on next it's going to do the prerequisite checks and if all the prerequisite checks are uh, are okay then it will give us the install right now the install option is grayed out so it will give us the install option give it a minute one, one or two minutes for checking if this particular server is capable and all previous checks passed uh, click install and i'm going to click on install at the end of this install at the end of this install the the domain controller this particular server needs to be rebooted and configured which is going to take some time so i'm going to pause the video and come back so the domain controller has been set up so let's log into this particular machine you can see here db now it has got db slash which means that it is logging into this particular domain and you can also verify from here if you click on this prop this pc and you can see db.com is a domain controller so let's all good now what we are going to do is <clears throat> what we are going to do is we are going to create a we are going to create a domain user called oracle which will be used as a service account for your oracle so let's create one account called oracle in the domain but before creating the domain account i need to do uh, something so basically i don't like complicated passwords uh, it uh, i i tend to enter wrong passwords if it is complicated so i'm going to change some settings so what you need to do for that and again don't do this in your environment if it is your local environment definitely but in the production you should not use this uh, simple passwords but what we'll do is like we will click on this if i open group policy management under this domains under this db.com and you can you can click here and you can say edit and what i'm going to do here is like under the policies windows settings uh, and security settings and account policies and password policy password must uh, this one i'm going to disable it and I'm going to change the complexity of the length of the password so that it can accept. And I'm going to change all of this to zero so that it doesn't remember any passwords or, you know, um, password age, everything. I'm going to change it to zero. And how many passwords, uh, you know, so all of this I'm going to change. And after this, what you need to do is you need to launch command prompt as uh, in the, and you need to run GP update, GP update sorry gp update slash post so otherwise it will it will take its time to update that particular policy so we are updating that we have changed the policy and we are going to update it quite fast and now what we what i'll do is like i'll go to the server manager go to the tools go to the users and computers and i'm going to create a new user in the domain and that particular user so i'm going to create a new user called uh, so I'm I'm in the users and I'm going to click on any of this blank or you can click on this user and say new and I'm going to say user and I'm going to create a user called Oracle and uh, I'm going to give uh, uh, it cannot change password never expires etc but don't give this in your production environment again I'm telling you you should use a complicated password and password should be changed and it should be expired click on next and finish and we have created and uh, when we want to add the machines and again you you should not use oracle account as a domain admin you should have a separate account as a domain admin but i'm going to make oracle account as a domain account otherwise i'll have to create another account etc etc that is going to waste my time your time so i'm going to make things simpler so that's done so now what we are going to do i'm going to check uh, something so let's go to the dns uh, server manager tools dns and i'm going to check the ip address of the my uh, 
under the DNS, I'm going to check the IP address of my 19. So you can see here there is a 0 0.109, which is a private IP 1.109, which is a public IP. So the domain controller has uh, been set up. So at this moment, uh, so only thing that is pending now is setting the domain controller as the file server. So as, if you remember, I already mentioned that the domain controller will be and we need to disable this particular firewall. So this particular firewall we need to disable. Otherwise, we have to set up so many rules. So I'm going to run this particular command net sh advanced firewall set all profile state off. So this particular command is pretty simple say and if i actually show you what exactly happens so if i open this firewall here then you can see firewall is on firewall is on firewall is on so i'm going to close this and i'm going to run this command and once that is done i'm going to open the firewall once again and you can see now that off 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 all the firewall is off so it was on 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 using one single command i turned it off so that's good so now what we are going to do is we are going to actually set up this domain controller as a file server. So remember that I already set up one service um, when I installed the role. I also installed SCSI target server. So we don't have to do this. But what we need to do is like we need to create some shared disk. So I'm going to create three shared disks and I'll tell you why while I'm creating it. So go to the server manager again. Go to the file and storage. Go on the SCSI protocol and click on this click on this create and how about i actually remote to this particular machine rather than you know so more choices and i'm going to use a default different account say slash db slash oracle now i'm going to use i'm going to use uh, yeah so i'm logged in to the domain controller as oracle domain user i'm going to go to the server manager and under the server manager all uh, sorry let it come here and file and storage scuzzy and to create and scuzzy so use this particular option i'm going to minimize this and i'm going to in the d drive so this is the d drive that we created i'm going to rename this uh because this is not an oracle so i'm going to rename this as a sandbox and i'm going to create a directory here new sand and what we are going to do is we are going to create three different days so i'm going to say type a custom path click on next and if we i'm going to say ocr disk again this name doesn't matter you can give whatever name 5 gb disk click on next and new scuzzy target yes definitely we need to create a scuzzy target again name doesn't matter and add and we need to add four ip addresses here uh, so 192.168.1.101 the public IP and the private IP so we are going to add one by one so that looks good oh the fourth one did not get added <clears throat> okay that looks good so public ip of node 1 public ip of node 2 private ip of node 1 private ip of node 2 that, so that looks good and leave that and click on create so right now i created an ocr disk of 4 4 gb so we need to create more disks um now let's say new virtual disk again and this time i'll again go to the same path d drive sand and under this i'll say I'll say click on next and this time I will say data disk of 20 GB. So again, this is your naming convention, whatever you want to use the same SCSI target. So I'm going to choose the same SCSI target. I'm not, I don't have to create another SCSI target. So that's done. So 5 GB disk, 20 GB disk, and I'm going to create another disk for the OCR. So I'm going to create another disk. So click on next uh, and I'll say FRA. So another 20 GB disk and same target i don't want to create another target and that's done so we created three different disks so now if i go to that location send drive you can see date ocr fra and data so the this is this is a 5 gb disk this is 20 gb disk this is 20 gb disk and why does this shows only 4 uh, mb that's that's the reason because these are dynamically expanded disks so when this when they will use automatically they will group so that's good. So the domain controller has been set up. So what, what we need to do on the domain controller is actually we need to do one more thing 
is um, the remember that these are our IP addresses. So this 1.101 is your public IP. The 0 0.101 is your private IP and this is your virtual IP. So anything with one is public. So that's and you can see anything ending with one is for the node one. Anything ending with two is for the node two and anything ending with nine is for the domain controller and scan IP is this. So now what we need to do is like we need to create a host A entry in the domain controller and I'll show you how to do that. So if I go to the DNS here and if I click on this forward lookup zone DB and you can click here new host A record and you will say DB scan you will say DB scan and you will uh, actually let's do this at a later point in time. Okay, so let's not jump to that. So now we have set up all of this and created an Oracle service account, create a shared disk, set up domain controller as file server, set ton of the firewalls and change the host name. All things are done on domain control. Let's go to the node one and whatever I'm going to do on node one is what I'm going to do on the node two. So the generalize has been already been done, so the networking. So we need to set up the networking for node one. So I'll take this IP and I'll go to the node one. So this is the node one. I'm going to log into that particular node one. And this is the first time I have logged into the node one. So click on click no here and we need to set up the IP addresses for this particular machine. So we need to change that IP address. So zero is actually the first network is your public IP because that's the bridge IP. The second network is your private IP. So I'm going to give this is again optional. This is only for your reference. This is not mandatory. Click on properties, uncheck IPv6, click on IPv4, click on properties, use this address. So that did not get copied. So let's see, let's take this 192.168.1.101 and the, the domain, the gateway is one and this is 109. This is the IP of domain controller, which is 109. So this is the public IP, subnet mask, default gateway and TNS server. So click on OK, click on close and do the same thing here as well. So uncheck IPv6, click on IPv4, click on properties, use this and this time I will use exactly same IP but this time I'm going to use zero because zero is for your zero is for your private IP, no default gateway and this will be 109, the private IP of your domain controller. So that's done, close this, so that's done. And we are going to re re rename this computer as node one and we are going to reboot that particular computer as node one. So let's go there to the node one and I'm going to open the PowerShell as administrator and I'm going to click run that particular command. So I'm going to run, rename it and it's going to restart that particular machine. So that's uh, that's rebooted. So let's log into that particular machine, verify that whatever settings that we have done looks good. So I'm going to launch a command prompt and I'm going to verify the host name, which should be node one, so win 90, that looks good. Let's look at the IP config and public is 1.101 and private is 0 0.101 that looks good now what we are going to do is we are going to add this particular machine so we have changed the host name we have set up the ip address we have not uh, turned off the firewall so let's do that as well so we are going to turn off the firewall and then what we are going to do now is we are going to join this particular machine to the domain add machine to the domain to do that what we are going to do is we are just going to specify the name of the domain so i'm on the node one right now and i'll open i'll open the file explorer right click on this pc click on the properties click on the change settings and click on the change once again and here i'll give the domain name which is db.com and if if it gets connected, I'll give the password of a domain admin account. I know that Oracle is a domain admin. Again, not a good practice. However, this is a lab. So I'm going to click and if it says if it's welcome to db.com oh man, it's it has to be restarted. So I'm going to restart that particular machine. So Okay, so let's all close this restart now. So now the node one is getting rebooted. So let's do the, the node one settings are done. So let's go to the node two. Okay, we need to do one more setting. So let's not jump to node two as of now. Remember we set up the SCSI protocol. So I'm going to add this particular SCSI protocol, uh, SCSI drives. And before adding, I'll show you. <clears throat> so let's give it a minute. 
so let's log into the let's log into the node one and i'm going to show you something so what i'm going to do is like i'm going to um i'm going to open the computer management and i'll show you how many disks are visible here so if you if you see here under the disk management you should be able to see that we have we have this d drive which is oracle and uh, the, the the c drive only two drives we have got we have got little two drives what i'm going to do now is i'm going to launch this kazi initiator kazi initiator you have to click yes because it should automatically start next time it was okay and it should start this time as well so you should always click on and you should give the ip address of your you should give the ip address of your domain controller here the private ip address so i'm going to say yes i'm going to say quick connect and it's got connected and click ok and then you should be able to see we got three disks here 5 20 20 so this is your ocr disk and i'm going to make it so this is your ocr disk all are offline so you got you can see that we got three disks here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to initialize this particular disk so let's make them online make all of those disks online so give it a minute and let's do let's initialize those disks and i'll say mbr so let's do that so now all of those disks are basic mbr disk and they are online so i'm going to do one more thing what we need to do is like we need to actually format those particular disks but um, okay so let's do that as well so administrator tools look so launch command prompt and i'm going to make the command prompt a little bit bigger so make a font of let's say 20. okay i'm going to make this and i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to run a command called disk part and list disk and you should be able to see we got this 5 gb disk we got this 20 gb disk we got this 20 gb disk i'm going to select and I'm, i'll keep that disks in the background so that you should you when i run that particular command you should see how this those goes so right now all three disks are in the all three disks are in the black so i'm going to say select disk two and if I say list partition, there should there will not be any partition on that. There are no partitions on this particular disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create partition extended. And there is a spelling mistake here. Extended. So I'm going to create and it turned green. See that it turned green. Now I'm going to do logical and it became blue in green. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this three so first thing i'm going to create a extended partition and then i'm going to create a logical partition and if i do list partition you should be able to see that we have now two partitions the extended and logical and i'll do the same thing with the with the disk four as well so i'm going to create extended partition and i'm going to create a logical partition so that's all done now what i'm going to do is the activity on node one is done our activity on node one is done however one thing is what we need to do is we need to actually uh, i'll uh, i'll uh, enable the remote setting so that you know i i'm able to connect to this particular machine uh, remotely so i'm going to enable this uh, remote desktop setting on this particular machine so i'm going to do that and what i'm also going to do is i'm going to now uh, log out from this particular machine and log into this particular machine as a as a oracle user so let's do that let me see if it remembers me sometimes it doesn't remember so i'm going to click and i'm going to log into this particular machine as an oracle user and i'm going to change this background i'm going to change this particular background to green so that we know that whenever i'm on the green background that time it is a node one so i'm in a node one and i'll i'll do some more settings i'll say this and i will open the command prompt and uh, i will make that command prompt slightly bigger so that you guys can see when I, whenever you are watching this particular video you are able to see this particular video properly in a clean big font so that's done and what we need to also do is like we will i'll add the oracle user as the admin user on as the admin user on the node one so and whatever i'm doing here the same thing i will be doing in the second node so that's done so our work on node one is done and now i'll go to the node two so what we need to do on node one two again we need to generalize which has been done set up the ip change the node name 
disable the firewall, add the machine to domain and log into the SCSI drives and add the Oracle user as the admin. So these are the settings that we are going to do on node two. You can skip this particular part because whatever I have done on node one, exactly same thing I'm going to do on the node two. So log into the node two now. And I need to change this to two because this is node two. So everything and say no to this and tools mm -hmm. and uh, SCSI initiator will do later. So first thing is like we need to change the IP addresses. So open network settings, change adapter options. And if you want to rename again, it's your choice. If you want to rename it, rename it. If you don't want to rename it, don't. It's fine. If you know which is which, this is, that is more than enough. I normally get confused. So that is why I always keep the naming convention. So the first one, click on properties, uncheck IPv6, click on IPv4, click on properties, use following address and i'm going to copy that once again sometimes it doesn't remember what i've copied <clears throat> so this is fine one and 254 default gateway for you know public ip we need to we specify the default gateway and this is the ip address of your domain controller so that's good so that's done for the year and i'm going to click on properties and i'm going to <clears throat> properties here uncheck the ipv6 and this one will be zero this time and 255 no domain no default gateway and this will be the ip address of your this will be the ip address of your domain controller so that's all good so that's done now what if, what we are going to do is like we are going to verify it actually that it all looks good so let's open the command prompt and verify that host name would be some random so it has we have not changed it but let's look at the ip config and let's verify so 1.102 public and 0 0.102 private that looks good so now it's time to rename the okay before renaming actually i'm going to you know i'm going to change this particular i'm and add why i keep logging into that one so i'm going to launch okay so i'm going to turn off this firewall so that's done i'm also going to log into this SCSI protocol so that next time when it boots it automatically gets connected so i don't have to and i keep logging into this so <clears throat> so i'm going to do this tools and um, SCSI initiator and yes I'm going to say yes to that and I'm, it will launch here and I'm going to again do the same thing 109 quick connect that's done that's done okay and let's verify that it actually came there so disk management create and format and I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to go here and let's look at the disk and you can see all the disks are there but they are not online so let me bring them online so all of the disks are online now that's good and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot this particular machine but before rebooting we need to change the host name so when it reboots when this particular machine node 2 gets rebooted so I okay, so let's okay so I'm going to say PowerShell. I'm going to launch the PowerShell and run as admin. And I'm going to paste that command, re rename computer, new name, win node 2, and at the end, restart the machine. So the node 2 is getting restarted at this point in time. So that node 2 is also uh, rebooted. So let's log into that node 2. But um, okay, so I'll have to definitely log in as administrator because what I have not done is. Uh, not enable the remote desktop setting so let's enable the remote desktop setting on this node as well so let's let's do that and what we are going to do now is we are going to we are going to add uh so before adding we need to join this particular machine to the domain so what we are going to do now is we are going to go to open the explorer this pc click click on properties change settings change and give the domain name db.com and if it discovers the domain uh, it will prompt for let's give the username and give the password of oracle user and if everything looks good welcome to db and it will go for another reboot so we need to reboot it for joining this particular machine to the domain so let's wait for the reboot to complete so the node 2 has been also rebooted so now it's time to connect to the node 2 also from the remote as oracle user because if it is connected to the domain we should be able to log into this particular machine as a domain user and what i'll do now is i will again we need to do the same thing we will add the 
Oracle user as the domain user. So whatever steps I've done on node one, I'm doing the exact steps on the node two. So you can definitely skip this particular part. So that's done and I'm logged in as Oracle. So I'm going to change the color of this so that you know that this is uh, this is blue so i'm going to change this to blue so the blue is node 2 and the green is node 1 and i'm also going to increase the font size of this so i'm going to launch the command prompt and i'm going to increase the font size so that you guys can see this particular video properly so that's done and i'm going to do this i'm going to uncheck this so that's all good now what we are going to do is um, uh, let's verify something so let's this is the node one so host name and ip config everything should be ending with one so 101 101 one is public and zero is private looks good let's go to the node two host name this should be node this should be node two name of this will be node two and ip config everything should end with two so that looks good and let's verify in the dns actually that everything everything is registered so let's look at our dns so uh, let's refresh this and node 1 has appeared with 1.101 0 0.101 that looks good 1.102 0 0.102 that looks good so all the three machines are now part of the dns as well so that's good so now what we need to do is we are at the uh, at the situation where we need to change some oracle related settings so this is the registry variable and this particular registry variable we need to set to 600 or this is for the ntp time setting so we need to do this only on node 1 and node 2 so i'm going to keep a note of this so these are the two registry variables and local machine system current control set services win32 time config so these are the settings so i'll repeat local machine system current control set services win32 config so let's do that let's launch the rug edit and we need to do this not on the domain controller we need to do this on node 1 and node 2 so let's go to local machine system current control set let me make it in the middle services win32 time then config and under that config we are going to change two settings neck max neck uh, max negative phase collection change it to decimal change it to 600 change it to decimal change it to 600 max positive phase collection change it to decimal change it to 600 so that's done on node one we have to do the same thing on node 2 as well so whatever we do on node 1 we need to exactly do the same setting on node 2 as well so i'm launched the registry and i will not create a notepad here because i remember that particular value hk local machine system current control set then services then win32 time then config and then under this one is the neck phase correction change it to decimal change it to 600 click on ok click on max phase correction and again oracle will tell you if it is not correct oracle will tell you so that's all done so let's close the registry variable we need to do one more setting we need to uh, add the oracle user as administrator which i have already done and change the network metric value for the public interface to top 20 so where, whatever is your public interface value you need to change the metric value 20 so let's do that so open the network adapter open network interface change adapter options this is your okay so i think okay so somewhere i messed up the naming convention let's take a look at what swat actually this is very interesting this is not really good so at one public and at the two okay so this should be at two okay so this is at two private so let's refresh this now this is the public ip let's verify so ipv4 properties yeah that's the public ip so what we are need to do is like we will click on okay so i minimize all of this and i'm click on this click on properties click on ipv4 click on properties and click on advanced automatic metrics uncheck it and set to 20 for the public we have to do this only on the public interface we have to, we are changing the metric value on the public interface on node 1 and node 2 so let's do that on node 2 open the open the network controller change adapter options public ip click on properties click on ipv4 click on properties click on advanced uncheck automatic metrics and set this to 20 that's done so that's all good now what we are going to do is we are going to now call rack ip settings we are going to look at the rack ip settings so these are the rack ip settings so you 
as you by now know that anything with one is your public IP. Anything with zero is your private IP. So the virtual IP and anything that ends with one is for the node one. So if you see for the node one, 1.101, 1.101 is public IP, 0.101 is private IP and 1.111 is your virtual IP. Similarly, for the node 2, again, these are all my own configuration. You can change it based on your production needs or your configuration. And because these are the three scan IPs, 121, 122 and 123. What we need to do is like we need to create a host A red entries, host A entries for all of these IPs in our AD DNS. So we need to create host A entries and I'll show you for one how to do that. So let's take a, let's take this DB scan for which we will create this particular IP. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say new host A entry and give the name of that, give the name as a DB scan. And this one will create a, so this one will create a host A entry. And you can see this is the host entry. Now I can manually create all of this, which is time consuming. So I created a small script and I'll explain you what is. This is the one simple command and I'm repeated that command and I'm going to show it to you. So let's put it in a, sorry, not in a command prompt. Let's put it in a notepad. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to tell you what exactly this particular command does. So you can see here. So it's, it creates three entries for DB scan using 121 122 and 123 it creates one for private ip one one for node one one for node two virtual ip node one node two and three scan entries it's going to create all of this so launch launch uh, powershell launch powershell as administrator and click on click on that so let's do all of that let me actually make this a little bit bigger so that you can see what I have done. So I'm going to do that. That font doesn't look good at all. So yeah, so that's what I've done. And now if you if you if you go to the DNS, and if you click on refresh, you will be able to see that we got private IP for node one virtual IP for node one private IP for node two virtual IP and three scan IPs 121 122 123 so three scan IPs that's what so everything now we don't have any work on domain controller you can safely log out for the domain controller so let's so these are the IP settings now now we are at the stage where we have to install the grid software and you know the grid software has to be installed we we have to do it only on one node and from the one node we will we will we, the it will take for the other node so we have to copy the software only to the one node so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to copy that particular software so let's say i'm going to copy this to software and i'm, I'm not sure whether the copy will work but if it works well and good so now i'm going to right click on it click on folder i'm going to create a folder called software so i'm going to paste that and let's see and looks like the software is getting copied right now now based on based on you know copy speed it looks like it is going to take some time so what i'm going to do seven minutes probably because i'm copying the grid home and the database home so i'm going to pause the video and come back once the software is copied or while the okay so while okay so forget about that actually uh, so we need to do we need to do something actually so what i'm going to do is like you know okay i think it will not allow me to do anything that's okay so let me pause and come back so the both of the softwares have been copied and i'll show it to you so both of the softwares have been copied yeah so you can see we got both of the this is the database home this is the grid home so what we need to do is like under this D drive, we need we'll create some directories. So this is for the database. This is for the database base. So let's put it in a capital. Again, these are some of the naming convention. You can install anywhere you want. But the, 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 the main point is if you choose C drive on node one, so you need to make sure it is the C, we have the same location on node two. So we got four directories, Oracle home, database home database base grid home grid base so these are the, and we need to create the same directory structure on node 2 as well so let's log into the node 2 and I, I can do something i can actually launch something like this and then i can just copy paste so now if i go to the node 2 this is the blue window and if i open the d drive 
we sh can see that all these four directories actually what i did is like i actually remote it into that and i copied those four directories so that's good now what i'm going to do is i'm going to close all of this not required i'm going to open the file explorer go to the location where i copied so and i'm going to unzip using 7zip i'm going to open that extract it and i'm going to extract that particular software to d drive v21 grid so the grid look grid software to the grid location <coughs> sorry and and the and the uh, the database software in database location so i'm going to copy this go to the c drive softwares open open the software extract it and put it under the d drive so i'm going to extract the software so the extraction is happening for the grid for the grid and for the database home the grid is going into the grid location the database is going into the grid database location so uh let's let let's let me pause for the the extract to complete so both the softwares have been extracted and we have to do this only on one node as i mentioned before so i'm going to close this all of this and i don't i don't need this as well because we have already changed the settings so i'm going to i'm going to close this as well so i'm going to open the d drive and you can see that we have got v21 d and if i go to the node 2 and if i go to this you can see it's completely empty and this and i have not and I, I did not even copy the software to the node uh, to c drive software because we need to just do it from one node so we don't have to copy the software so now if you go to this v drive v dollar grid you can see this setup small setup.exe file so we are going to launch that particular setup.exe and from this setup.exe this particular setup.exe we are going to install the grid software on both node 1 and node 2 so we are not going to say configure oracle grid we are going to just say set up the software only and we are uh, we are going to set up the software first so click on next oracle grid infrastructure yes click on next and you, you can see here it by default chose the node one so i'm going to add the second node and that's done so i'm going to install the software on node one and node two click on next it's going to validate the network interface usage etc etc installation location it asks for the grid base i'm going to give i've already created this particular location so i'm going to create i'm going to give that and you can again it's your choice how you want to give where you want to store the grid home where you want to store the grid base etc so it's going to do some prerequisite checks i'm going to pause the video and it looks like all the prerequisite checks are met so i'm going to click on install and what it's going to do is like it's going to configure uh, set, install the grid home on the local mo uh, node which is the node one and it's going to copy the software to the remote node and it's going to install it on the node two and set up the oracle base again this is going to take some time i'm going to pause the video and come back once this is done So the grid software is installed on node one and node two so you can see and it what it says here is like if if you want to so this what we have done now is we just install the grid we have not configured the cluster or the grid cluster which we have to run the setup.exe once again to configure the cluster so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to close this and i'm going to show so we had we had some of the disk which we created so what we need to do and i'm going to show you that actually clear the screen and if i if i run disk part command and if i do if i do list disk so that was not in a administrator mode so let's launch command prompt in administrator mode so let's do that and if i run disk part and if i do list disk you you will be able to see that we have got this two three four and i'll just give me a minute so at this moment we have installed the grid home and th these are if you remember we had three disks disk two disk three and disk four uh and this is the 5gb disk which i'm going to use as ocr this is for the data and this is for the fra so there are th these are raw disks these are these are not actually asm disks so there are two ways of configuring this as asm disk and i'll show you both of them so you can use 
the ASM tool utility. So you can use the ASM tool utility. And here you can, you have to give the, if it is a disk two, you have to give here two. If it is a disk three, you have to give disk three. And you, you can, this is the label. So, <coughs> sorry. So if this is, let's say the 5GB disk is a OCR disk. This is your data disk. And let's say this is your, uh, this is fourth disk, which is FRA disk. So this is one way of doing it. But what I'll do, I'll, I'll just show you actually. So now I'm going to exit this and clear the screen. And let's do this. And what I'll do is like, you know, I'm going to run this little command. ASM tool minus add this disk as an OCR disk. So it's going to label that disk as an OCR. So let's do that. And that's done. And what I'm going to do now, I'll launch, go to the grid home, or take my ASMCA, which is nothing but Oracle Storage Management Configuration Assistant. ASMCA. So I'm going to launch Oracle Storage Management, ASMCA. And here you can say uh, specified disk, <coughs> disk group, sorry again, specified disk group. And you can see only the OCR is listed. The other two disks which are not listed, three and four. So what we can do here is like we can say stamp disk and add all change label and click on next. And you can see this is a 20 GB disk. This is a 20 GB disk. This is the hard disk 3, hard disk 4 and we can stamp this particular disk. So we can stamp this and click on next. Click on, uh, so actually that's fine. So I'll, so I need to select the disk actually. Wait just one minute. So I'm going to select this particular disk data and I'm going to stamp it. So, okay. So what? And I'm going to stamp this and that's done. So now if you see here, this particular disk has appeared as a data zero. So now if, if, if I wanted to, I could have done using this. So I'm going to stamp the third disk as FRA. So this is the FRA disk, sorry, not uh, that one is already done. So this is the fourth disk, which is FRA. So now if I cancel and if I say uh, specify disk group, then we should be able to see data zero, FRA and OCR. Now you can see here data has got with a zero, which is prefix that is added. And if you wanted to change that, you know, you can use and, but you have to use the minus force option. So, uh, okay, so let's uh, not minus add. So we need to say, let's give it a try here. Okay, so minus add minus force. Yeah, so let's give that option. Yeah, so you can see now we, we if we, if I cancel this and if I say specify this group and you can see data FRA and OCR. So we we have created this as an ASM disk. So that's done. So now we have installed the grid home, but we have not configured the grid. So what we have to do is we have to again go to the same location D drive V dollar twenty one grid and run the setup same setup again. But this time we will not say setup software only. And this time we will say, this is already done. So we will say configure grid, Oracle grid cluster for a new cluster. So this is what we are going to choose this time. So click on next, standalone cluster. Yes, click on next. Give the name of your cluster, anything of your preference. So rec cluster. And this is the scan name. So let's say DB scan. So this is the scan name. 1521 is the port, that's okay. Click on uh, next. And here we need to add the second host. So I'm going to add the second host here. That's done. That's done. So we are going to add the second node. So you can see node one, node two, node one web, node two web. Let click on next. It's going to validate the IP addresses and it's going to choose. It's going to allow us to choose uh, basically, it will allow us to choose, but we should not change it because Oracle has chosen those uh, interfaces uh, based on how they connect, etc. And you'll come to know what I'm talking about. So if I click on next, just give it a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see the 1.0 
we renamed it as a with at one public and it automatically detected it as a public it is not based on the network name here it is based on the connectivity between the nodes so it identified that this is the node which is which will act as a public and this is the subnet which will act as a private so based on how the ip is configured how the network is configured it automatically identified so that looks good click on next now it's going to do the prerequisite checks and do not GMR, we don't need it. And here it will list all of those three disks here. You can see here we got OCR disk, FRA disk, and the data disk. All of those three disks got listed automatically. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, make it in a center. And you can see automatically, it, and we are going to choose the OCR disk. And I'm going to say external, and I'm going to change this name as OCR. Again, this is your naming convention, but we are going to use this as an OCR. So I'm going to say OCR. Click on next. And again, I'm going to say same password and we need to choose a complex password. It will give us the warning because I gave I do not use a simple password and we don't want to do that. And it's going to now do the prerequisite checks. It's going to take some time. So I'm going to pause the video and come back once the prerequisite checks are done. So as you can see, it's still doing it and it's done actually. So all of the prerequisite checks are passed. So you can see all of those are passed. Everything is succeeded. So whatever settings that we have done till now, that looks good. So that is why every check has been succeeded here. You can see all the checks have been succeeded, which is the good news. Click on next. And if everything looks good to you, all of these settings looks good to you, then click on install. And it's going to now is this particular software is going to install or configure the grid for you. Now, this is one of the longest step. It takes a lot of time. So what it will do is like, it will configure the node one as a, with the ASM, it will configure the node two as with the ASM and it will do the cluster verification and everything, etc. This one takes definitely time. Now on the screen, you are not able to see any alert log. So if you want to know what is exactly doing or what's happening in the background, I'll tell you where to look for. So open the explorer, go to the location where you have specified the grid base, go to the direct location, go to the CRS, go to the host name, again, go to the CRS, click on trace and click on alert. So the Oracle base, DIAC, CRS, node host name. So which is node one, this is node one, CRS, trace, and here you can see alert. And if I make it a little bit bigger, you should be able to see that it is right now configuring. So it has done multicast OLR uh, Oracle grid configuration. So it started this. So it's going to do this in the background. I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to come back. Now, remember one thing that this is the most complicated step. If this step passes, then rest of things will definitely work. And if you face an error in this particular step, if I face an error in this particular step, I'll have to redo some of the things. And what I will do is actually I will pause the video and I'll say that this is the end of the part one and I'll create another part two for this where we will continue on this. But if it succeeds, if it succeeds that if this works, then it will be recorded in one single video. Options are open. I'll keep my options open based on how it goes. But this is the longest part right now. If you see here, it says 4.15 p.m. 4.15 p.m. That's what it says. Let's see how long it takes. Again, I'm going to pause the video and come back. So looks like everything is uh, is successful. You can see here um, everything is looking good. Succeeded, succeeded, and the last step, Oracle Cluster Verification Utility, which will check everything, is right now running. Uh, and if that goes fine, uh, then it will click on finish. So it will automatically ask us to cancel to close this particular thing because everything will like everything looks good at this moment so what what we are going to do now is we have just so we have installed the grid home we have configured the cluster asm disks were created and we have configured the cluster so right now we have a two node rack cluster however the database home software is still not installed so we need to still install the database home software and then we have to, once the database home is installed, we need to also uh, make sure that we 
uh, create one test database so that is something that is pending right now so let's that's the conf the configuration of oracle grid infrastructure of our cluster was successful that looks good so now we are okay to close this now let's go to the database under the database you will again find a setup here you will run that particular setup so what we are going to do now is we are just going to install the database home so we are not going to create a database we are going to install the database home and we are going to install it on both the nodes node 1 and node 2 once the database home is installed we are going to create our database uh, our uh, sample database so give it a minute for this particular thing to appear it's uh, it's basically uh, checking whether it is a rack uh, setup or a single node setup or standalone setup so that's why it is taking a bit of a time give it a minute so we are not going to use this particular option we are going to say set up a software only click on next rack database installation yes we need rack database installation click on next on both the nodes node 1 and node 2 that looks good click on next enterprise edition or sc2 standard edition 2 based on your licensing choose one of those options use windows built-in account click on next it says it uh, it may it says uh, we need we, we we should we should actually use uh, existing user or create a new user do you want to continue and i'm, I'm okay with that so here we have created a directory for database base which is currently empty i'm going to use that particular directory for the oracle base home so that's uh, oracle home base so that's done and now it's going to check if that particular directory exists on the uh, check for free disk space across nodes failed so do you want to continue so what did i do mistake here let's actually check something let's actually see if we have okay so this has got uh, 80 gb and let's check on this so let's check here so did something went wrong so so what uh check for free disk details so let's give it a minute so uh d does okay okay matches an existing no part of location of d drive v21 database matches an existing part on win node 2 neither the specific location or not any leading matches matches so let's take a look at what exactly happened here so v21 so let's v dollar database base so let's go here and then v dollar database that looks good so okay so i'm having this particular problem I don't see an issue so i'm going to say yes let's see if it fails then we will we will try to figure out why it exactly failed and probably try to reinstall this but i i don't see any issue in that particular thing so let's let's see so free space on node 2 okay so c drive user so that's where it asks for a free space that's okay so so this was the issue so time zone consistency that's okay so that is also fine so 436 and 436 so that looks good so the time zone has no issues but there is a issue in users oracle app data local temp so users oracle i'm, I'm going to ignore that so this is just a warning and um, here i think somewhere okay so operation failed b dollar so did i create that particular directories as who owns those directories let's see a security okay so that might be a problem so because uh, okay so let's do one thing let's add oracle user as the probably what exactly has happened is like oracle user so let's do that apply and let's do let's uh go to node 2 and here click on property security and add it and let's add oracle user so that's done click on apply okay so now let's go back here and let's do the recheck okay still the task verifies free space and writability of this and okay 
So for some reason, <coughs> maybe let's try doing something. Let's actually create another directory v21 database base and this time I'll give underscore. I'll not use this for whatever reason it's not working. I'll go here and put it here. Not this way. I need to make sure that I give the full path. So that's done. Click on next. And I'll make sure that I create the same directory here as well. So that's done. And details. So what exactly is happening? Let's delete this and let's create it once again. Okay, and uh, okay, so now let's go back. I'm having some prob troubles. Okay, Okay, I'm going to ignore all of these warnings and I'm going to install. And I'll pause the video for the installation to complete. So the database home is also installed. The registration of Oracle database was successful. I had to ignore those errors, but you can see here the, the Oracle base, it was giving the error on Oracle base, but it was able to create this particular folder, which means that something was not correct with the installer because it was able to create it in the folder so good decision that i ignored those errors so now what we are going to do we are at the last phase where we are going to go to the oracle database home and we are going to click on database dbca which is which is going to launch this particular oracle database configuration assistant and we are going to create our database this is the last part of this particular video so the grid has been already been set up and i'm going to now create a Oracle database on to the uh, Oracle database. So Oracle Aura 21C, so it's a 21C. If you want to create one PDB, I'm going to choose two PDBs. Again, you can go with one PDB and I'm going to specify it chose OCR. So I'm not going to choose OCR. So why did it not, uh, I, did, I, did we not create? Okay, I think, okay. So this is what exactly what happened. So it only shows OCR, but we should not be creating our database in OCR. So let's do something. Let's actually, <clears throat> let's actually go to the uh, ASMCA, let's launch, launch ASMCA and let's create some extra disks that, uh, you know, so we are going to, here you can see we have got this two ASM and we got the disk group. So we got only one disk group. So we are, what we are going to do, I'm going to create two disks. So we are going to create this as a data disk. So I'm going to create this as a data disk. So click OK. So I'm going to create this group called data and I'll also create a disk group called FRA. Because and I'll cancel this. Let's see if I, it can. It won't. Uh, it will say refresh. Yeah, it chose the data. So I'm going to choose the data and I'm also going to uh, create one more disk group with which has got this particular ASM disk. I'm going to create this as a FRA. So I'll give the name FRA. So now we have one OCR disk. We have one data disk and one FRA disk. I'm not going to use the FRA now. Probably in the future, if we if I want to configure the archive log or if I want to configure the FRA location, I can, but I'm not going to use this. So we we, are, we can exit this. Now, if I browse you and refresh it, you should be able to see we got FRA, we got OCR, we got uh, data, OCR of 5 GB, data is of uh, 20 GB and FRA. So I'm going to choose the data option, click on next and OMF, I'm going to uncheck. You can leave that if you want, you can keep it OMF or if you don't want OMF, you can uncheck that particular option. And if everything looks good, let's see if we want to configure FRA, you can configure. I'm, I'm not going to configure FRA. So click on next. Uncheck this def and give an SGA. So I'll give 2048 based on what's the database size, how many transaction queries you can give the SGA size and PGA size. And uh, we'll keep this one, but we don't need 
enterprise manager database express so we are going to uncheck it and again i'm going to give the simple password you should give a complicated password and i'm going to use the same password for all sys sys admin sys system pdb admin and dbsnmp so that's okay are you sure you want to continue and we are going to create the database now it's going to again it's not going to create a database for us straight away it's going to do some prerequisite checks which is going to take some time i'm going to pause the video and come back once the prerequisite checks are completed so looks like all of the prerequisite checks are completed successfully you can see all of the prerequisite checks and this is what it is chosen and if you want to change something if you want to change something if you have made some mistake you always have the option to go back and correct it so let's see here all of the prerequisite checks succeeded 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 so there are no warnings so that's that means it's all good so i'm going to click on next and i'm going to click on finish and then what it's going to do in the background is it's going to create an oracle database for us a cdb pdb architecture oracle container architecture oracle 21c database on and this is the two node rack cluster on windows 2019 so i've used and and I, i've said this before you can use the same to set up your oracle 19c cluster as well i have not done the 12c so i do not know exactly if this will work for 12c but i have done the 19c and this is 21c cluster i chose 21c cluster uh, so this is a two node rack oracle 21c rack cluster on windows 2019 and we are at the last step where we are creating the database i'm going to pause the video and come back once the database is created so the database is created successfully as you can see the database looks good so i'm going to close this and what we are going to do is we are going to try to connect to that database from sql developer so let's see using the scan and remember if you remember the scan ip that we configured was 121 122 and 123 so one of the we can use any of these scan ips so let's let's see where is our so you, we can use either 121 122 or 123 the scan ip these are the scan ip so let's do that so let's give a name here so let's say aura 21c this is a rag database again this is your name whatever you want to give sys i'll give sys and i'll give password which is password and because we want we are connecting as a sys and one of these ip so 121 looks good and service name aura 21c so let's test it and it says success let's connect to it and let's run some queries to look at our database so i'm going to run these two queries i'm going to take a copy of this i'm going to paste it i'm going to format it and what i'm going to do i'm going to put another clause here say order by instance name so i'm going to use this particular clause and i'm going to format it once again yeah so we we got this query and i'm going to i'm going to just put it here and run this particular query and i'm going to make this in a middle so you can see we got two instances c1 and c2 node 1 node 2 instance is open this is the instance open time this is the database name and this is the read write mode of that database so we got we have our two node rack cluster now i can again we can prove that actually so we can what we can potentially do is like we can launch the we can launch the command prompt so let's go to the command prompt again and what we will do is we will set oracle home so let me clear this particular screen so cd dot dot cd dot dot cls and set oracle home which is set oracle home and do we know where is the oracle home and again we don't we can keep it in a small letter or caps letter because this is windows but do you know where is the oracle home it is v dollar 21 database so i'm going to copy that i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to say set uh set oracle sid is equal to or a or a 21c one because this is the first node and i'm going to run SRB CTL uh status database minus d or a 21c and you can see that it is running on both the nodes and what i can do is like i can run another command the config database command i can run that particular command and it will show me and you can see type is rack so this is a rack database on two nodes 
node one and node two and now if i if i do one more time if i run if i do one more time so what i'm going to do now is instead of oracle home to the database i'm going to set it to grid location and if i run set um, oracle sid to be plus asm1 and then if i run crs ctl res minus t status resource and you can see all of the resources online scan ip your our fra your data disk listeners all of these are completely online so looks good so this confirms that this is a rack installation so what what we have done is like in this particular tutorial we have we have learned about how to do the step-by-step -step setup of oracle rack 21c on microsoft windows 2019 using vmware workstation now i did mention that you know i did not cover the document but i'll cover the document for you so that you understand what was done actually so these are the softwares that are used apart from this particular four softwares i have not used anything else so vmware workstation pro 17 evolution edition windows 2019 evolution edition oracle 21c grid oracle 21c database and apart from that 7z for extracting not mandatory again it is if you want to do things faster you can do things faster with 7z so that's why i use 7z but it is not mandatory these are the four softwares which is required to set up this particular tutorial now our our configuration is something like this so we had we have dc which is domain controller which is serving as a file server as well we have this is the rack node one this is the rack node two as you can see this is node one node two these are the two nodes or you can see from here as well node one and node two and uh, basically we first created a gold image so we created a gold image we chose the bridge adapter for public we chose the internal network for private we installed the 7 zip optional not mandatory we also added a second hard drive second hard drive for oracle home and grid that hard drive uh, first uh, in the domain controller is used for the send storage and for on the node 1 and node 2 it is used for storing the, uh, or the uh, uh, sorry uh, it is used as a oracle home oracle and the data uh, grid home and the base of oracle and the base of oracle uh, grid so we cloned out that machines into no uh, three machines domain controller node 1 node 2 then we generalize that particular machine then we set up the IP addresses. We rename that particular machine to domain controller, name of your choice. We set that particular machine as a domain controller. We disable the firewall. We set up that domain controller as a file server. We create a shared disk. We created an Oracle service account. That was on the domain controller. Then we set up the node one. We generalize the machine, set up the IPs, rename the machine, disable the firewall, join to the domain log into the scuzzy drives whatever we did on node 1 exactly same thing we did on node 2 as well so i'm not going to repeat this then we changed some oracle specific settings the registry variable these two registry variable we changed to 600 we added oracle user as administrator on both the nodes important we change the network metric value for public interface to 20 on both of the nodes whatever we do on one node exactly same settings we did on the node 2 then we added these uh, host a entries in the dns so these are the entries that i added not for the public ip for the private ip virtual ip and the scan so we added those entries i i you can do it manually or you can use this particular command add dns server resource record a you can find it on internet and find out how the format looks like so it is the same command copy paste it and uh, this particular command was ran then we uh, this is we do not use o drive we actually chose the d drives so you can see it is in the d drive uh the, the, the those directories are of your choice because when i cloned that machine it became as a d drive so we actually installed uh, the grid software on the both the nodes we extracted it we installed it then we using the disk part utility we created we created those raw raw asm disk and using the asm tool we marked them as a asm disk again you can use asmca then we use again in the same directory we ran the setup.exe then again we installed the database home database base and then we ran the uh, setup.exe to install the database home and then finally we created the database using dbca and once that is done we launched the sql developer and verified 
that verified that our database looks good and it is a two node track which we can eventually we can also find from uh, i think that is gone which we can also find from the srbctl config database act command so this was the tutorial on how to set up two node rack oracle 21c again i will mention that same tutorial will work for oracle rack 19c on microsoft windows 2019 so you can use the same steps to do that as well if you have liked this particular video if you have learned something new today and if you are able to use this particular video in your work environment or a personally and if you if you have learned something new and if you do like the content that i'm uploading and if if after watching my videos you are learning something new or if my videos are helping you i would request you to hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel thank you for uh, for watching your motivation your likes your subscription means a lot to me thank you and see you in next tutorial bye bye